Hello, today we will be talking about blue gouramis. These are fascinating fish, and today we will be talking about basic care for them. So first, let's go over the biggest asked questions, tank size. So, I keep mine in a 75-gallon tank, but I understand that many of you guys don't have that big of a tank, so they'll fit nicely in a 30-gallon. If you have only a 10 or a 5, there's many other options. If you only have something like a 5, then either go with a beta, which is actually a type of gourami, or a honey gourami. If you have more like a 10, you could go with like a dwarf gourami. And then 20, you could possibly squeeze one of these guys in there. But um, these guys can grow up to 6 inches. They're highly active. This is a female, and she's a little aggressive, so I, so the males might be even more aggressive. So just be careful with aggression. They're also big hogs, and they eat a lot. So also be careful about if you have any finicky, if you have any fish that are either finicky eaters or take a while to eat, you might have to target feed them. They're pretty easy to care for, but you might just want to stop out. A good thing about them is if they're stressed, they'll... Um, those blue spots will fade and they'll turn a dark, deep blue. It's beautiful, but it's not good. So I keep the pH around neutral. Their diet, uh, they eat literally everything, so they're not finicky eaters at all. And they'll go rooting around getting allergy, hydras, snails even. They'll take care of snail problems. I know many people are looking to take care of that. They're pretty active, fast, very personable. And they're this beautiful blue that, as far as tank mates go, I know they say that they're community fish. They are not. I've even, this guy's, I've seen take down some small little minnows. If the fish are full grown, it shouldn't be a problem, but I would stick more to like two inches at least. Don't put them with like really small stuff. I would say stick to two inches or more. Make sure that they don't, I wouldn't say no other gouramis and be very, um, Careful with, um, don't, don't stuff that gets like really easily picked on. You don't want that. If they don't go with anything with long trailing fins, I mean, I don't know, but I promise you they'll nip them. Also, leave space at the surface. It may not seem like a big deal, but these guys like to breathe air and they kind of have to breathe air. So, if they're not breathing air, then they can suffocate. They need to breathe water and air. Now, one of the gouramis, which is probably the most abused betas, because they breathe air, people think that you can keep them with no filtration. Now, that is not true for any gourami. You still need to have proper filtration like any fish. But if you have a power outage and your filter goes down, it's not the end of the world for these guys. So next, we're going to talk about temperature. So I keep mine at right about, it's really small, so the camera's really focusing. There we go. Um, it's right about 80. It's not, like, super hot, like 78 or, like, 75 to 80. That would be good. They're not too picky about that. I, I don't know how really warm they can get, but that's the temperature. It's not very complicated, so... Yeah, let's talk about more care about these guys, and then I'm going to talk about some unique features, so stay tuned. So some of these unique features about them is, first of all, they can change color if they're not feeling aggressive. I've literally seen it with their own eyes when you're still adjusting to the tank. I'd feel happy. You'd flash, to, you'd flash from black to blue in literally seconds. So it's actually really cool. Another cool thing is that they can breathe air. They also have these really cool, like, hinge jaw faces. I don't know. It's hard to focus in on it. But they have these really cool hinge jaw-like faces. Kind of like mud, African mudfish. Not mud skippers, but African mudfish. It's really cool. I don't know if you can really see it. And it gives them a grumpy face-like appearance. Another thing that they have are those little tentacles. Right now he's pooping, so just don't mind that. Well, that is kind of a cool thing that they poop out of their stomach. It's kind of a little weird, actually. They also have a labyrinth organ, and they have spikes on their stomachs and their backs, which is just extra protection. They also can be kept with predator fish, just not like your big, like, Oscars is going to get gulped up. But I'm keeping mine with some rocket gars because they can only eat slender-bodied fish, so... 
they're okay. There's two rocket guards in here. Then there's the Bishers. There's one there, and there's one there, and then there's also that little Royal Pleco down there. I haven't really, you guys, this is actually the first appearance he's ever made on YouTube, and I will be doing a care video on him soon, so stay tuned for that. If you haven't already, please subscribe to actually look for more videos, but let's get back to the focus, Blue Garamis. So, next we're going to talk about snail control and pest control, most likely. Let's just talk about pest control. This is a big thing because many people are looking for fish that will eradicate pests. First, we're going to talk about snails. These guys, they won't eradicate snails, but if you're someone who's just don't like like a hundred snails, but you're okay with a few there and there, these guys are perfect. They'll go after the smaller guys, and they'll just occasionally do it. And they'll just kind of like... I have a bunch of pond snails that I got from the plants, but they don't, like, eradicate them, but there's definitely, I see them, I catch them trying to root around with them and eating them. So, that's really cool. Another thing that they take care of is algae. They will, they don't look like it, but they love to eat their algae, and they, they aren't very picky about it either. Another thing that they get rid of is hydra. They really will eradicate Hydra. I used to have Hydra in this aquarium, but I don't even think I have it anymore. Partially because these guys, let's see if there's any of it left. No, I don't think so. I think he actually got rid of all the Hydra, which is pretty cool. So they go rooting around your substrate, eat that algae, Hydra, snails, whatever you're working about. Mostly baby snails that they'll really get. They can barely fit. So next we're going to talk about aggression. When it comes to aggression, these guys aren't like the most aggressive fish like cichlids, but they can be a little aggressive, so be careful. Definitely, this is a female. There are males. I guess you could keep female and males together, but I don't really know that. I would be careful before you put anyone with them. When I first got them, I'm not blaming the pet store or anything. It's a great pet store that I go to. But they had him with some other Goramis, and he was a little beat up. I mean, she. He, it finally healed, but she had a little cut on her, and her fins were a little torn. But the point is, they're a little, they're a little aggressive towards each other, like most Goramis. So just be careful when it comes to that. Be careful with tank mates. And... They're also um, very active, so if you're looking for something to add some action to your tank, these guys will definitely do it. Let's remember, this guy's not even full grown. I mean, this is my hand right next to him. And he is not full grown. I mean, he's like coming on four inches, and they can reach up to six inches. Four inches is their average, but if you're keeping in something like a 75 gallon, it, they can easily reach six inches. They are a little bit of slow growers, though, so they're not going to, like, immediately just grow like a weed in your tank. But they definitely can grow. If you're keeping them with predator or, or larger fish, definitely buy them as, like, jumbo-sized. If you're kind of trying to keep them in, like, a smaller community aquarium, give them and keep them in more of a... Um, Keep them in more of a, uh, get them in like a smaller size so that they'll get more used to tank mates. Now, I'm not saying that if they grow up with a fish, they won't become aggressive with it. I'm just saying there's a less of a chance if they're always used to being with these fish. But then again, don't keep them with really small fish. Like, I'm telling, an Indonesian dwarf fish would be a terrible idea, but I don't think anyone even keeps those that much. I mean, I've, I've, I know people do, but it's very rare. But he, they would gulp that up. Live bears, you're not going to get a lot of live fry. He'll probably eat most of the fry. They're good for live bear control, actually. If you now think about it, if you have a 30 gallons getting overrun with your guppies, throw one of these guys in there. As long as they're not fancy guppies. If they're fancy guppies, stay away from these guys. They'll nip at the fins. But if they're like guppies, mollies, blatties, I don't know, sword tails, probably sword tails, but be a little, I would say proceed with caution with sword tails. But if those guys are kind of overpopulating your tank, just, or enders, endlers would work too, endlers, live bearers, but just, it's not very hard. All you need to do is just throw one of these guys in there and he'll take care of all the fry. Now, there is a word of caution. I've seen these guys take down very slender bodied, about a little under an inch fish, so be very careful if you're putting them with like your really small stuff, like, um, 
like Chili Rasboras. I don't know if those guys would work, but they're a little tinier. Now, I don't want to scare you away from these guys. These are magnificent fish, but there's just... But just keep an eye on them. If things are getting aggressive, they can be a little aggressive. So just, that's all. But I guess I'll just have to end this video. Thanks for all of you guys for watching. Please like if you can't. Please like if you dislike. Please leave in the comments below. Leave in the comments if you thought I excluded anything. Or if you have your own Gourami, please leave that in the comments. And subscribe if you would like more content like this. I'm going to make a lot more Cure videos in the future. So stay tuned. But for now, I'll see you later.